So today I'm going to be talking about a work we've been doing, which we've called in a pairing product arguments. But the general idea is that we want to be able to um, aggregate lots of data in a way that is very efficient to verify and also maybe a bit quicker for the actual person who's doing the aggregating than your usual snark solution. Um, I'm going to spend um, the first part of my talk motivating what I mean by this aggregator and where it would be useful, what are the pros, what are the downsides. I'm then going to talk a little bit about trusted setups because I believe our solution is a lot better when you are willing to accept a trusted setup. And I'll finish, if I have time, talking about the potential privacy benefits we could also see. So one theme that we're going to see a lot today is that SNARKs can be used to scale blockchains. So with blockchains, you have lots of issues to do with data storage and verifier time in the sense that all data has to be seen by all of the full nodes at least, and they have to check every single state transition which is happening is being done correctly. And you can definitely envisage a situation where this can be done a lot more quickly, and as has been proposed by several roll-up um, projects, where just one person sees lots of the data, lots of these transactions. They compute what the state change will be, and then they just broadcast the state change plus some proof that they have performed this action correctly. So how a SNARK would do this is what a SNARK does is it takes in a computation and it provides a proof that the output of that computation is correct. Um, so we have two security properties. The most important one is soundness. If the result is wrong, then no prover can convince an honest verifier it's not doable. You can also have a zero knowledge um, component, which is useful for privacy solutions. Um, but I'm going to start by talking a lot more about soundness because that is relevant for both scaling and privacy solutions. Soundness is also the harder of the two properties to achieve in general. So with a SNARK, you're, you have a situation where proving um, generating this proof that um, your change of state has been done correctly is very expensive. So expensive that it might put people off doing it. Um, but verification is very cheap, significantly cheaper than running the computation itself. And proof sizes are also very small, so you're not having to store lots of data. And one nice thing that we have is that if you have a dapper privacy solution which is using snarks you can build a snark of a snark so this is also something which we are able to aggregate and if you have lots of stuff being done at the same time do it a lot more efficiently uh, methods about how to do this have been known for quite a while um, i think the first really big relevant work was on cycles of elliptic curves back in 2015 but for 128-bit security, these curve sizes are bigger than for normal SNARKs. A lot of work has been put into improving these solutions as well, including um, some talks which we'll see later today. But the big downside to this approach is that if you wanted to um, represent your computation using Socrates, for um, the computation of a SNARK verifier being satisfied, then you're talking about an overhead of at least a thousand, 10,000 even, per SNARK proof. And actually, I think in practice, once you've um, actually done all of your group exponentiations, it might be more than that. So we're in a situation where our transaction aggregator is going to be very, very expensive. It's going to take several minutes to run. I, I would expect, that's a guess so. So our uh, more recent solution is to use an inner product argument, um, which is a type of zero knowledge argument really. But here we have that the aggregation process, the uh, actual proving time is going to be much faster 
So we're thinking an overhead of six compared to natively verifying SNARKs. A verifier time can be logarithmic with a trusted setup. Without a trusted setup, we still get some fairly significant savings, but nothing on the asymptotic level. Um, and one downside really to our work is it only works with more classical SNARKs like GROT16, GM17, it doesn't work with the more recent ones. Another downside is that we do need target group operations and currently, in Ethereum at least, there aren't any precompiles for target group operations. I'm pushing for them a bit, I'm hoping that they'll come through someday soon. Um, and there is uh, an explanation, a guide on how to implement these in guide to pairing based cryptography. Also it's been implemented in the sexy code base. So I've been talking a lot about how there's two solutions really, if you're wanting to aggregate snark proofs, either you can have cycles of curves or you can use our approach with an inner product argument. Some of you might be thinking, if you're really following my talk very closely, why can't you use both? And largely the answer to this is that maybe you can. We haven't implemented it, we haven't experimented with it, we're not sure whether it works, but we feel like there's a good chance that it might. So you could take together our work on, say, aggregating GRUT16 proofs, and then you could represent that verifier inside Socrates or your circuit for proving your computation and prove a snark for that and that could get you the best of both worlds you could have the situation where you've got small proofs and um, small verifier time but also a much faster prover hopefully I'm also hopeful that this kind of approach might be helpful for data availability proofs this is a another buzzword that um, the Ethereum team have been worrying about a lot lately. They want to be able to generate fraud proofs such that um, like clients can have more faith that the full nodes are providing correct information because if they're not, somebody can provide a proof that they're not. But then they run into an issue that if the data is not available, then how can you prove that someone hasn't behaved honestly? And these data availability proofs are not an easy thing. Um, Certainly, we haven't yet found something which would be efficient enough to use in ETH 2.0, but um, people are working very hard on that. So hopefully, hopefully we'll come up with something reasonable. And I definitely think that this approach would not be, uh, um, would be worth looking at, because if you have a Merkle tree with lots of snark proofs that uh, things have gone through efficiently and you want to just verify them all in one go, that is something we're able to do. So I've mentioned that our solution is most efficient when we have a trusted setup. Um, the most commonly used trusted setup at the moment is one called Powers of Tau. This was sort of initialized by the Zcash group. Um, so if you have a trusted setup snark, then we're not able to build proofs without first running a setup ceremony. And the idea here is that if a single honest participant takes part in that setup, in that ceremony, then the resulting snark will be secure. But if each and every one of the participants is adversarial, it won't be secure. Um, there was a little bit of controversy over the very first setup that Zcash ran, which was largely to do with the fact that they only had six participants. But in the more recent setup, they got 87 participants, which seems more reasonable than six. And the counterfeiting um, bug, which um, if you don't know about it, this was a bug that was found, which um, meant which meant that if somebody knew about it, maybe they were able to print money. That was not because of the trusted setup. A similar mistake could have been made using any zero knowledge proof system, such as bulletproofs or Starks. And really my personal opinion here is that the issue was not so much that there was a trusted setup, but that people couldn't tell if something had go gone wrong. There was no knowledge of the total supply of coins. Okay, we are using a trusted setup. It's a simple trusted setup. 
um, assuming that it's been audited well and um, implemented well, we, we wouldn't expect things to go wrong with that layer of the application. But we're not able to use the exact format of Powers of Tau. In particular, Powers of Tau gives some elements out in the setup which we do not want people to know. So we would have to run one from scratch if we wanted to run our protocol. Okay, one quick side note, we can aggregate other things as well. And in particular, in the paper, we describe how to aggregate BLS signatures. But for the purpose of this talk, I was talking about SNARKs. We're not able to aggregate um, anything which is like multi-round though, or that uses the Fischer-Mir transform. So for the last part of my talk, I'm just going to be switching topic a little bit, still talking about our work on inner, product, inner pairing product arguments, but now talking about how they're relevant for privacy solutions, um, such as the Nightfall application. So these applications are using SNARKs, and often the most efficient SNARKs have a one use only trusted setup. There has been a lot of um, recent papers on universal SNARKs, which have uh, many applications per setup um, approach. And this is something I consider to be better at least for the following reasons. With a one time only setup, every single application you run is going to require a new setup, which means that the circuit representing your constraints needs to be got right the very first time. And if there are bugs, you can't fix them. And if there are efficiency improvements, you can't implement them. With a universal setup, however, every application can use the same setup, which gives you sort of more ability to audit things, more ability to check everything's going okay. The circuit representing the application can be edited. So if you make a mistake there, you can fix it. If you find an efficiency improvement, you can fix that as well. Um, so we're able to help implement these universal snarks with um, a smaller setup. So the ones that are in the literature at the moment, they have very, very large setups. They scale linearly in the size of the circuit. And if we take the example of the Aztec setup that was run recently, they required gigabytes worth of data in order to run the setup. It was for a very large computation, to be clear there. And they also had very high prover time requirements. So if you wanted to participate in the setup, for example, they were allowing you to have six hours in order to run that computation. And that's assuming quite a fast computer. You can improve on this just by having smaller circuits. But what we suggest as a potential alternative is using um, Sonic or Plonk or Marlin with our polynomial commitment scheme. And the benefit here is not totally free. We do have larger proofs. We do have higher verifier time. But our setup would take something that was 32 megabytes down to 50 kilobytes, for example. It's square root size. And that um, benefit, it also, um, it also helps with the prover time. Our prover time is going to be smaller, at least when it comes to that part of the snark. But again, not totally free. There is some trade-offs to be made here. This is the table in um, the paper where we're talking about how we fare in terms of efficiency. You can see that we've included a transparent and a structured version of the efficiency um, table. This is because we do provide a way to implement the scheme with a transparent setup. However, our verifier time is quite a lot heavier with that. We get square root verifier time. Whereas with a structured setup, we can get that down to logarithmic. We can also support bivariate polynomials, um, where the efficiency is going to depend on the total number of coefficients, non-zero coefficients that is. Um, and this is something which I don't believe people have managed to do before. So just to wrap up, um, the three takeaways I would give from this talk is that it would be very nice to have precompiles for target group operations in solidity. Um, we can aggregate SNARKs um, proofs with very cheap provers and without having to use pairing cycles. And we can build universal SNARKs with very cheap prover time. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you very much.